Hi, it's Jen from Shabby Fabrics back with the Easy Piece Table Runner Series in this month. It's for September and of course we couldn't resist the schoolhouse, the cart full of apples and everything that really represents September here to us. Uh, the kids are going back to school of course and it's one of my favorite times of the year. This is the disappearing four patch. We're going to learn how fun that block is. Again, it looks complicated. That's my favorite part, but it's very easy to put together. Of course, you'll need the download. You can go to the Shabby Fabrics homepage at the very bottom, click on free downloads, and you'll be able to find the Easy Piece Table Runner series. And of course, this is one of many patterns in the series, and we have other series as well. So much there. You can download that um, and use your own fabrics, or if you love what we've done here, we have kits available where all the fabrics for piecing are included and any applique is pre-fused and laser cut for you. You can skip the tracing and skip the cutting and just jump right into the fun, which I love that. That's my favorite part. Okay, so you've got everything downloaded. Of course, there's a thread set. If you want to be able to coordinate your applique pieces where everything's being stitched down with beautiful coordinating thread, that's an option. But let's jump into how to make the block. The instructions, of course, are going to be showing you and telling you what size to cut your pieces to. They're just squares to start off with. As you can see, we made two of the one block in those colors and one of, it's the same block, it's made three times. We just made um, two in this one colorway and one in another color combination. So just going to sew those four together and we're pressing all of our seams open. Any of our previous videos in this series we're usually pressing to the dark side. This is a little bit different because of the assembly. As we work through the block, we found that if you just press your seams open, it tends to go together a little bit easier. So we've got everything pressed open. Now we're gonna go ahead, oh, I'm gonna use a two and a half by 24 and a half inch ruler, and I'm going to be looking for the one and a half inch mark on this ruler. Creative Grids, You've heard, if you've heard me say one thing about Creative Grids, it's that the black dots represent fractions of an inch, half inch, one and a half inch, two and a half inch, and so on and so forth. And the white dots represent whole increments, one inch, two inch, three inch, and so on and so forth. I love that. I also love the grip that's on the back of these. It helps avoid slippage so that when you are cutting, the ruler's not moving away, resulting in a miscut. So, I can't say enough about Creative Grids. There's so much intelligence behind the ruler and they truly help my projects come out more accurately, more precise. I'm making far less cutting errors because they make it so easy to be successful. I'm going to lay this ruler on my one and a half inch. I'm looking at my one and a half inch and I'm gonna lay it on this seam and I'm gonna be using a spinning mat and you're going to see why that spinning mat is going to be so important. I really do not want to disturb my four patch throughout the series of cuts because it's very important everything is precise. My one and a half inch line on my ruler is running right along my seam and I'm going to make a cut. Now I'm going to go ahead and lift up that ruler and make one rotation to the right and I'll be laying that again on the seam at my one and a half holding firmly and making another cut. I lift up my ruler, I make another rotation right. Notice how I don't have to disturb my block. That is so important and is absolutely integral into your block coming out right because every time in the past, before I had a spinning mat, I would have to lift up my pieces or I'm literally running around my table and of course this is a big table. I would end up reorienting my fabrics and they were never quite put back down properly and um, it resulted in me taking a lot of time to put the block kind of back together so I can make the next cut. So this also saves me time. Okay, so you've seen how that ruler works beautifully, the spinning mat works beautifully, and bam, we're ready to move on to the next step. This is where it's really nice to have your download because it's going to help you now know how to kind of shuffle your fabrics. So we're going for, this is where we are now, We've made our cuts and notice the switch. So we're gonna do exactly what they're saying. We're going to switch these fabrics. We'll leave that right there for the moment. This one is going to be coming here. 
you just follow the picture, I think I, I think I can always be successful when I'm following a picture. But again, if I'm trying to read instruction, I'm like, now what do they mean by that? So I definitely double check my side picture. Is that what I'm expecting to see? My orange, cream, red, cream. Yes, that looks correct to me. See how easy it was to shuffle that? And already the block looks complicated, but through just a series of rotation, that's how we got here. It's so simple. Now you'll be wanting to use your patchwork pins. And as you would expect, you know, right sides together, you're going to sew a seam, sew here. Same with this. And you're just going to be sewing your sections together, pressing your seams open every single time. So all your seams open here seams open here and here and when you sew the three rows together again you'll go ahead and have those pressed open so that's all there is to making that block two of these in the red and the orange colorway one in the blue and the green colorway you're just going to sew those together i want to move on to the applique because there's a little bit of a different step this month so let's put our beautiful threads right here with our project and we're going to run over and look at that applique there's a couple of the things we're doing this month. We added some embellishments too, which I love. I really have always been fond of buttons. But there's some fun things that we can do with our, this particular project for September. Now, I'm used, I used the fusing mat ahead of time to pre-assemble the different sections. I have my cart uh, with the apples. I've done that. So that's kind of ready to go. I've got my single apple over here and then this was kind of a unit I've got my little school bell I'll put that off to the side so I'm going to peel that off of my mat and this is how I do uh, applique every single time I make these subunits so that I'm now only I'm, I'm only moving four things to the background and not all these various pieces and finding it very difficult to recreate the site picture and of course that's done through the use of my light box, which I'll bring over here. If you've seen any of our videos with regard to how to do applique very successfully um, with the aid of a light box and uh, applique pressing sheet, or now the fusion mat, you'll see how easy that is. So if you haven't seen that before, you've got your light box. This is the wafer one. You have your diagram here, and you have this over top and you're using that to layer your pieces of course you never want to iron directly on to the light box you'll always move that typically the ideal configuration is to kind of have this either up above and then as your uh, pieces are positioned you'll move it down and you'll iron them down in this kind of a back and forth transition that's again go back to the very beginning of the easy piece table runner series where i show you in great detail how to do that if that's an unfamiliar process to you we like i said we've done that ahead of time what makes this particular month different is that some of the pieces are sewn into the seam allowance and some are not so we've prepared our background piece this is our sky and this is our background so we have that put together and on some of the other ones we also put the bottom portion which is the green but here we're not going to do that just yet our diagram helps us see see the dash lines here that's indicating that those items will be sewn into the seam allowance so as we bring that onto our background and we can just position that there. You, you know, this is where you get to bring your own personality in. If you want to have this kind of bias to the right and you want that off center, do it. It's your project. Or if you're like, no, I want this to look just like Shabby Fabrics does, then go ahead, grab that light box, go ahead and turn it on, bring your diagram on top of that. We'll bring our fabric on top of that and we'll see exactly where we had positioned everything. So that's where that is. And I can see my schoolhouse back there. I see where my trees go. I can see where my bell goes. So I'm gonna grab that. Let's make sure our iron's all warmed up and ready for us to go. 
So we'll get everything exactly positioned. But the apple and the wagon need to wait until the bottom portion is sewn on. So let me go ahead. I'm going to move this to my pressing mat. One thing I also wanted to mention, the windows. Because windows, the, the mullions as they're called, um, I definitely wanted to have those in my windows. You can skip that step if you wanted to. I've always liked to have the lines in my windows. You can, and I recommend, you go ahead, after you cut out your windows, or if you're in the kit, you just take those pieces. You can even remove the paper backing. Bring those over top of your light box, over that shape, and you can draw those lines in. Don't use a friction pen because as you iron this onto the background, those lines would disappear. That's where I like to use a micron pen when lines are permanent. If you're uncomfortable with that, you could start with a friction pen, draw those on, make sure you're happy with that, and then go over that with the micron pen. And it helps if you use a ruler. Then you could iron again and that friction pen would disappear, but the micron is permanent. I did that ahead of time. I went ahead before I put my windows onto the schoolhouse and drew the lines on using my light box and my diagram because I knew once I put my windows on to my schoolhouse, I wouldn't be able to see those lines again. So they're now there. Your options would be, of course, hand embroidery, but we've all mastered the straight stitch. Don't be afraid to use that dark brown that's in that thread set, or maybe you have a black at home or dark brown. And I just recommend you do a straight stitch over top of those lines twice to have it be nice and bold. So that's how we handled the lines and the windows. This is where you would go ahead and stitch down all your applique for this at this point if you want. Or if you're like, no, I want to go ahead and do my, all of my applique in the end, that's great. Then let's go ahead and sew that ground on and then we'll applique the rest. So let's go ahead and go to our machine and I'm just going to sew a standard quarter inch seam allowance. So let's do that now. Okay, and as you can imagine, there's a lot of bulk up here. So as I make the decision of which direction to press, it's kind of not really a decision. The fabric wants to move away from the bulk of all of that applique. So we'll just press that this direction. And isn't that nice? The bottom of the schoolhouse, the bottom of the tree um, is already caught in the seam allowance. I love that look. It just looks a little more inlaid. It just, I love that, that look. Now, you can either visually just decide where you want that to go, and you can say, okay, I kind of recognize that the apple is kind of going over the window, and the cart is right there, and you just visually put that there, or you, of course, bring it back to the diagram, whatever you're comfortable with, and then we'll iron on those pieces. I'm just going to eyeball it. I think that looks really nice right there. And this is when we would go ahead and use our applique thread set to stitch everything down. You would sew these two ends. You, of course, there's two of these ends. You'll sew that to either end and go ahead and have the project quilted at that point. Now what is, I also am enjoying very much about this one is we've added some fun embellishments. Of course, what's a wagon without button, you know, little portions of the inner part of the wheel. So we have that too in the kit and you would just, of course, position those where you want them to be. You'll have four of those in the kit, two for each end, and then a cute little doorknob here to stitch onto our little schoolhouse. 
and just do that with needle and thread. You could also use the thread set here to be doing that stitching as well, which I thought just added a sweet little touch, fun little button embellishment. So I would love to hear your feedback about the Easy Piece Table Runner series. We always want to be bringing projects that you're enjoying, they're fun to make, and of course, maybe you'll be sharing that with a group or maybe, uh, you know, like your quilt guild. We welcome you to share these videos with them and encourage more people to get involved in quilting. I am looking forward to bringing you the Easy Piece Table Runner for October. I'll see you soon.